lovely. I was going to say good morning, it's afternoon actually, isn't it? But you, you get the idea. So, don't bang into the wall like I just did. Nice and easy and gently. And the usual sort of checklist feet hip width apart, toes pointing forwards. Weight a little bit forwards in your feet. And you, Soften your knees, just allowing your hips to drop back, to sit back. A couple of slow, gentle breaths. Think about this term that I've used before, equilibrium. And I like it better than some of the other terms like balance and so on and so forth because it, it seems to have a bit more scope to it. Really what we're talking about it isn't just simple balance but obviously physically this sense of being in line with the pull of gravity so that any forces that act on your body from gravity which is really the main force that's acting on you at the moment are sort of evenly divided through your body like a kite when it flies when it hangs on the wind but also in terms of your mind your awareness we have a lot going on in our lives so there's a lot going on around us anyway it's still strange times and so on and just our lives in general, not necessarily bad things, but like a kite that finds a sense of equilibrium with, with, with the wind and can hang still there, then it's possible to find a, a sense of being centered in mind and body where you just find that, that, that space that exists almost in between all of these different factors. It's not ignoring them. It's not pushing them away making any kind of judgment on them. Just a sense that uh, where you stand is somewhere kind of in between all of them. One of my early teachers used to describe the standing posture as though you're standing on a hill looking out over a valley. And when you do that, when you look at the whole of the valley, you're not concentrating on any one detail. You're not looking at that particular tree or the other side of the valley or a town or anything like that. You've got this sense of the whole landscape, the whole vista. Another more recent teacher used to say that when we stand like this, we should be looking ahead, but listening behind. In other words, you're not cut off from anything. You know, the terms looking and listening are just to imply, if you like, a sense of awareness of what's in front of you, a sense of awareness of what's behind you, where you are. So the, the, the awareness that we're talking about isn't a passive thing, but actually very active because it will extend out into the, the environment around you, wherever you happen to be, in your living room or your garden or what, whatever, and not focusing too much on one thing means that you're not taking your attention away from something else. And the term in Tai Chi is central equilibrium. This is the, the, the position, the state, if you like, the mindset that we extend out from when we do a particular movement, obviously that movement becomes a, a, a primary focus, but the anchor, the central point, it's like, you know, when a kite moves, it goes on the wind and then it come, comes back because the person holding the kite is standing in one place. So it relates to all of these different elements, the physical routine, the alignment, the, the quieting of your attention and so on and so forth. So anything that we bring in to the, the practice, any ideas, any images, any particular movement that we do, will always have this quality 
underpinning it or in theory. In practice, we'd lose it frequently, but as I've said before, the, the rhythm of the movements extending and contracting imply a sort of movement out from a point, but also equally important, a movement back into a point. And then raising your arms, And let your hands drop down. So again, weight coming a little bit forward, let your hips drop a little bit, and then just see if you can allow them to continue to drop back and then push up. It's very important that when we do this, we don't let our knees go forwards like, like this. And one way you can look at this is to, for instance, you could do it against the wall or something like that, or you could do this, but you, that's not really good, that would do it. But I use this, and you know, if, if my knees go too far forward, what they'll do is they'll bump into the chair. Obviously, it's a slightly awkward position and you've got the chair in front of you, but it can be quite, quite a useful way of just measuring that. You don't want to keep looking down at your, your, your feet, as a rule of thumb, your knees above the balls of your feet. So it's your hips dropping back. And this puts a tremendous effort into particularly the thigh muscle, the, the quadriceps, the front of the thighs are starting to work really hard. But eventually, we want to get to a point where they've conditioned enough so that it's not totally down to them. It's almost like there's a, a softening of that that allows the movement to go a little bit deeper, right, eventually right into the bones themselves. It's not just the quads, I mean, it's a, I don't, all the muscles are involved in one way or another. And then cradling the ball and up and sink. So we push out from the root and we return to it. So imagine your root as a, as a kind of physical thing like the seed of a plant. The plant will grow out from the seed but not separate from it. The, the expansion, the lengthening in your legs, so your spine as though all the spaces between the vertebrae just expand a little bit, and the ribs, it's not just a vertical expansion at this point, it goes sideways, forwards and backwards, your whole body expanding and contracting and as you push up just have, if it suits you just every now and then try and take a breath in don't bother about the rest of the breathing cycle your body would take care of that let's get a sense that there's a relationship between your posture and your movement and your breathing And then change to the wild goose.
and then pass in the clouds. Do one more. Then go back to the first one and do them as a little sequence of three. One of the things that can really disrupt our sense of equilibrium or even indicate that it's been disrupted is just a tendency to speed up. We hurry ourselves. It's nothing to do with the speed of the movement, by the way. It's more to do with what's going on inside us. And that can show itself up when we do a sequence like this, because what can easily happen is we, and we, we push up, we expand, we contract, and then about halfway down, we're already thinking, oh, well, we've got to do the next one, rather than giving ourselves the time and space finish one thing. So another quality, if you like, the central equilibrium is that we're in this moment, not unaware of previous and future moments, but not losing the awareness of where we are right now. And then dragon plucks the stars from the sky. Another one which can physically exhibit, if you like, that sense of hurrying and rushing. See if you can take your hand all the way down and feel the fingers unfolding gently until they're pointing towards the ground. And only then start to transfer your attention to the other side. One more on each side. And then bring your hands slowly to this position here, just, just a almost resting on your, your hips. Start to push up and bring your hands around in front. 
And when you come back down, you're going to return to the position that you started from. So down and out to the side. And then repeat that movement, but this time pushing out sideways and turning. Again, Then let your hands come all the way down once again. Feel the weight of your hands, your arms on your shoulders. Peel one hand back. When you're doing this, obviously a lot of your attention is on your moving side. But just spare a bit of attention for the arm that's actually hanging down. Can you still feel the weight of your arm on your shoulder? And then if it's comfortable, you add the turn. Switch sides. Central equilibrium. The Chinese term is zhongding, which I always think has a lovely sort of quality about it. I don't know a precise translation of it. And then again, turn. Rowing a boat in the middle of the lake. So both in terms of, if you like, cause and effect, something associated with this quality of equilibrium is very much the sense of the whole body moving, the connections in, in the body. Because we get a, a, like an equilibrium of movement when it's not just one part of the body engaged with that movement. 
So when we lose that sense of the whole body moving and the flow associated with it, it's an indication that we're losing that sense of, of, of equilibrium. But on the other hand, trying to get that sense of the whole body moving can lead us to a, a sense of equilibrium. It's not a linear thing, they're just part and parcel of the same thing. So, this time, push up, turn. Your hands come all the way down, feeling the weight of your hands in the middle here, turn the other way. This isn't two different movements that we're trying to coordinate. This is one movement. So it encourages a sense of focusing into the physical center of your body. The area between the hips and waist. Here, the area is going up, it's turning, and there's an expansion that pushes your arms out. Here, the reverse, it's going down, turning back, contracting. Pushing up, turning, expanding, sinking, turning back. one movement would lead to another the sinking down would lead to the pushing up like a ball hitting the ground and bouncing up the pushing up will lead to the sinking down because eventually the momentum of that the energy of that will drain away and gravity will pull us down Very quiet, soft feeling in your shoulders. As your arms come up, your elbows hang down a little bit. So this time, middle of my movements, let your left arm just hang down, concentrate on your right hand, turn. And as your elbow drops down, let it go all the way. And notice how that brings your hand into your shoulder, turn and push out, push straight forwards. So it's a half circle from the side. Here, I push out. Notice that at the end of the movement, my elbow is still very bent. It's not that, it's that. And then I turn back, drawing the arm back. So you're throwing a ball. As I say, do be careful not to overextend your arm because it will pull your whole body out of line. You turn, bring your hand in, turn to the front. Turn, swing the hand up, let your elbow drop to bring your hand in. Push forwards. And try on the other side. So turn, your elbow drop, hand almost touches your shoulder. And so I can see a few arms kind of jerking around. If you get to this point and you just let your elbow drop, your hand will come into your shoulder, unless something very strange is going on in your body. So be patient. Observe your hand as it comes in. Don't think, oh, my hand's got to be here. Just think, oh, look, here it comes. It's there. Now I can turn forwards. When you push forwards, you should be facing straight ahead at the end of the movement, not over to the side. But now what we're going to do, you get to here, facing straight ahead. Then you do turn to the opposite side and you bring your other hand into the movement. Let the front hand turn, palm up, push forwards. So you now got a push-pull movement with your hands. 
is to turn in the center of your body that pulls the front hand back, pushes the back hand forwards. It's the turning in the center of your body that causes the rotation in your front arm. Again, don't speed up in your hands or your arms. There's no particular demand here to reach a particular point in front of you. If your hand doesn't reach that far, as far as you think it should do, then you were wrong to think it should have gone to that point. So again, there's an, an equilibrium in your body. An equilibrium between, say for instance, your two arms, one moving forward, one moving backwards at, a, at the same speed, because both are attached to your center. Like the spokes of a bicycle wheel are, are attached to the hub. And then let your hands drop down. Shake it. Good. So that can be quite a tricky exercise. There is always, for all of us, I think, going to be moments when we feel like oh, we're doing this. And that's exactly the moment we want to bring our attention back to, to the center of the body. I was teaching somebody recently, um, took the move from one of the Tai Chi forms, and it was a small group. And I noticed that it's kind of one more. They were speeding up at one point, quite a tricky part of the form. And one of them said, it's because I don't want to fall over. And actually, if you think about the example I gave to them was if you happen to be down on a, on, on, on the seashore where there's a lot of mud and you've walked out and it was like some bits of mud are quite wet. And you think, well, OK, I can get across this piece of mud. And then you realise it's softer than than you, you, you thought. If you speed up at that point, you can sometimes get past it. But then if the mud in front of you is softer and softer, it just gets worse and worse. <laughs> so you, you, you kind of go deeper and deeper. It's not the way we approach things in Tai Chi. When you feel as though it's starting to go wrong, there will be a tendency to speed up. This is a, a perfectly natural response. It comes from the fight or flight response, the adrenaline reaction. And it's there so that if you get attacked by a saber-toothed tiger, you've got enough energy to run away. Or if you're crossing the road, you suddenly realize there's a car there, you've got enough energy to jump. That's where it's useful. Mostly, it's not very useful. And if you always respond to things like that, if every time you get a letter from your bank, you see something on the news that's a bit alarming, you hear a noise, you suddenly realize that you haven't got enough time to do something, or you've run out of sugar, or whatever it happens to be. If every time that happens, you trigger the adrenaline response, you'll be in a constant state of anxiety eventually. So what we want to be able to do is to find a different set of responses that apply to quite a lot of things. You know, sometimes we need to fight or flight, but mostly we, 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 we don't. So, one foot forwards. So we use certain ideas, certain triggers, if, if you like to think of it like that, to bring our attention back. And I think one of the great things about Tai Chi as a form of meditation is that the, 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 everything that we need is here in our bodies. We don't have to chant anything or have an object in front and I'm, 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 I'm not I'm not against that by the way it's not a comment on that but the thing that we focus our attention on is the thing that is always with us which is our body our movement the pull of gravity whatever is going on if you're doing this and 
don't know, maybe you 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 hurt your knee yesterday, so it doesn't feel as good as maybe it did a couple of days ago. That's okay. That's that's just what that's just how it is. Doesn't mean you can't be aware of that. Don't strain against it or pretend it, it it's it's not happening. And then when you do this, just remind yourself when you go forwards, you want a moment to to settle in to that front leg. When you go back, you want a moment to settle into that. So there's this regular moment of settling of coming back into your center of recovering that sense of equilibrium which you may well lose in in between And on the other side, feet hip width apart, about the same in length or maybe a little bit longer as you let go in your hips more, no shorter than that. Play around with the angle of the back foot until it's helping you, not hindering you. Primary focus to begin with in this exercise is on your legs, but Nothing is isolated in Tai Chi. If you were doing this in a strong wind, you would certainly feel an effect on the upper part of your body as you move. But if you haven't got the advantage of being able to go out and practice in a gale force wind, imagine you're in water. Imagine the wind blowing on you. Good and give me next little thing. Go back to the parallel stance before we move on with this, just to remind you of, of an exercise I've done with, with some of you at least recently, and that we're going to build into the, the transfer of the weight. So you, if you remember, you imagine the pillars either side of your body, these round pillars, and you start off with your hands in front. So they're at this point they're slightly in front of my hips you can see and then from here they circle out they're sliding around the pillar and they rotate so that here they're slightly behind and you want to feel the rotation not just in your wrist it's not this it's your whole arm so if i exaggerate i'm not suggesting you do it like you see my you see my elbows and now if you, if you look at what's happening you can see my elbows moving you should be able to feel that without it being quite such an obvious movement. And take a moment just to feel what's happening in your chest and ribs, in your upper back between your shoulder blades and the spine itself. Maybe even down the sides of your body because there'll be a little bit of a response there as well. Left foot forwards. Hands on your belly. Let's do pigeon spreads and swings. Sink forwards. Settle into your front leg. Feel the expansion in the front of your upper body. And again, because it's an expansion, if it suits you to take a breath in, do that. And then come back. Remember, your, your arms don't go behind your shoulders this one. It's very rare that that happens actually. But we did it in the last exercise. We do it in fisherman cast a net, but not to any great degree. Exhale. 
expanding, reaching out and contracting. I've described those processes in a linear way. You do one and then you do the other. But in fact, if you think about what's happening here, we go forwards, we leave the back foot behind, we expand in the upper part of the body, but at the same time, we're sinking down. So in the end, this sense of equilibrium makes us aware that these processes are, are going on all the time. You know, if it's daytime on this side of the planet, it's nighttime on the opposite side, and so on and so forth. One more time. Another foot forwards. Hand on the belly. Pigeon spreads its wings. When your body's going forwards, your arms are going forwards and up and out. When your body stops going forwards, that movement dies away. When you go back, your arms are coming back and in. One more time. Check. How about having your first foot forwards? Now we're going to combine the transfer of the weight with this rotating movement that we did a few moments ago. Set your weight into your back foot, hands of palm forwards and slightly behind. So as you go forward, they're going to go out and around and end up slightly in, in front. So push forward. So now we can begin to connect up in our minds the transfer of the weight with that sense of opening and closing through our upper body. And this time, from this forward position, just drop back into fisherman cast the net. Same opening and closing in the upper part of your body. Just a slight change in the response of our arms, rather than the rotation. The hands stay facing palm back. Pretty much the only difference. So I could, I don't, I don't want you to do this, but if I was here and suddenly there was a pillar there and it got in the way, I'd go back to that. Just to, that would just be a response. And then we change to pushing a wave. And here, we don't want our hands to go behind the body because we lose the alignment and the power. So again, we have that feeling of opening, extending out in the front of the body. And this time we allow the shoulders to get pushed out, right? But we keep the hands, sorry, not the shoulders, the elbows. Not a lot, I'm exaggerating it a little bit here. 
Still, your weight is moving, of course. Do one more of these. Then once again, we're going to put three movements together in, in sort of sequence. So you come back, now let your hands drop down. We'll do this one with the pillars, which I unfortunately don't have a name for. And then you go back into Fisherman Cast a Net and pushing a wave. So from here, Go into the next movement, just let your hands drop down. Imagine the pillars on either side. Almost inevitably, you will get lost in the sea. So, oh, which one am I doing? It's not the end of the world when you get it wrong. Just come back to that calmer feeling. Watch what I'm doing or just pick the movement up in some way or another and start again. It's not a competition. So one more time. There are not that many fundamental movements in Tai Chi. One of the old, well, actually more than one of the old pieces of writing in, 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 in Tai Chi refer to what they call the, 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 the I think it's, the, is it the 13 basic movements of Tai Chi Chuan? Um, 13 movements, some of which are kind of step forward and step back or, and, and, and so on and so forth. So there aren't that many basic movements. They can be put together in, in, and expressed in, in lots of different ways, but there's a common thread that runs through them. So have your other foot forwards and start with your hands back and sliding around the pillars. Time change into fisherman cast the net. Pushing away. come down
and then full sequence. One more time. So we're going to do wind blows the willows, dragonfly skims, skims the water. And again, this can appear quite a complicated movement. It is, but it's quite complicated. There are several things going, going on. Hopefully, basic things like the movement of your weight, the turning of your center, and so on and so forth, the expansion and, and, and the contraction are becoming increasingly familiar to, to you so that you're able to uh, just have those happening without too much thought about it. Occasionally you might need to sort of focus on one, but then that's, that's always the case. But we, we tend to lose it. So, for instance, when we do Wind Blows the Willows, when we did this one earlier, I pointed out to you there's always a moment here when your arms are hanging at full length and you can feel the weight of your arms. Also, when we did this, I drew your attention to the weight of this arm, the, the, the arm that wasn't moving. We should be experiencing that regularly every time that we do wind blows the willows. So don't do this. So we'll, I'll turn my back and we'll do it together. But here, as I bring my weight forwards, I turn and here. Now I can feel the weight of my arms. Then I go forwards and I turn. I come back. here and and so on and so forth when you can feel that and i'm not sure i can do this but it's, it's, it's worth having it as a kind of oh i'd like to be able to do that actually that moment when you're facing forwards and your arms are at full length and, and you can feel the weight of your arms comes at precisely the point when your weight is 50 percent in in each leg. So although I often stop, start you here or something like that, the real starting point you could say for this exercise is actually here with your weight at 50%. We're not going to do it like that because I think, as I said, I'm not even sure that I can that, that I can do that. But you can see that each time we, we, we get to a particular point with an exercise, always, oh, we can now think, think a, a little bit ahead. The connections become more subtle. So I do this with my back to you. We will start in the back leg and you're going to turn to your left, have your left foot forwards, there, swinging the arms out, go forwards, just feel that slight dropping feeling in the, somewhere in the middle and swing through. movement of your weight, turn in your center, that rhythm of expansion and contraction should do the rest for you. And then 
if it feels comfortable to you, when you go forward, just let the back heel raise a little bit. You may get a bit of extra turn when you do that. Give yourself time to really settle on the supporting leg when you do this. And then step in. So your right foot forwards, weight back in your rear leg, your left leg, down to the side, sink forwards, feel your hands dropping in the middle. toes and your heel. and step in. As always, if this doesn't feel comfortable to you, and there's all sorts of reasons why, you know, even if you are normally fairly comfortable with this, there's all sorts of reasons why this might, oh, it doesn't feel very good today, then stay with the original exercise. Don't force anything. Listen to your body. If it's telling you, no, not today, then follow that guide. And bring your feet power. over your face. Over your head and neck. On one shoulder. Your arm. On the side. back and your hips light on your belly and
think another aspect to that quality of equilibrium is first of what I was really talking about just at, just at the end of that exercise then, which is that you know we, we can't always do everything. Um, um, you know, we want to have a sense of, yeah, we want to progress in these things. Um, and it's good to do that. It's good, you know, it's good to have that, that sense of a goal, but it's not a question of forcing the body. We have to also respect the, the sort of biological ups and downs, I suppose, in, in, in our body. Not even the, the, the elite athletes are, are performing at a particular level the, the whole time. You know, if a, a, a runner, is, is aiming to run in the next Olympics, then um, they'll, they'll have a, a scientifically worked out program these days so that they peak at the right time because nobody can be at that peak for the, it wouldn't be a peak otherwise, would it? So, um, you know, um, it, it may be, so, oh, hold on, it doesn't feel quite right. It's quite interesting, why doesn't it feel right? But it's not worth falling over to, 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 to force yourself to do it. So back to standing, embrace time to return to the mountain. Just sinking down, expanding, contracting. With that, I suppose the emphasis in this very much on that sense of drawing back and how we, how we allow that to happen. What processes are there in mind and body that encourage you to come back to that more centered, more grounded, quieter situation. One more time. And stand. Check. Lovely. Thank you very much, everybody. So I don't know what's like where you are. It's quite sunny out there. So if you get a chance to go out into the sunshine, please do enjoy yourself.